speak a few words about the history of the organization in general. Thank you very much. Don't even worry. Uh, I, I must congratulate you. We are just a quality. It's a wonderful display of the information that we're giving to everybody. It's your sovereignty, and it's time that we should look after our own sovereignty. My family bought uh, Vaughan's Hotel, which is just a couple of doors up there. It's 29 Farnham Square in Granby Road. as the headquarters of Open the Air, the Irish Republic of Ireland, Common Demand, and all the other organizations. And that's it. That's it in 1919. And the 32 County Election of 1918 that established the sovereignty of the 32 counties, that was from Vaughan's Hotel. And Bonham and the Heron, the Irish Constitution, was written there between 1917 and 1919. It's 93 years old, regardless of whether you can you, it's owned by the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And the Fenian Brotherhood, that's the Fenian Brothers, the shamrock, the green and the gold, the gold is the flower. And the Fenian Brotherhood was founded by John O'Mahony for America. They opened the White House for St. Patrick's Day, and they lobbied to build all the factories in Canada and all over Ireland. And they're a wonderful organization in America. And, um, but that's where it all started. That's where the state was founded, the Sovereign Republic of Era. And that's where the 32 county election of 1918 got to get And then it was ratified. Uh, on the 21st of January 1919 in the Cabinet Room in the Mansion House. And we still go there 93 years on and we're doing it and I'm doing it for 48 years. We don't get much attention. That's from uh, and Hare. And, and, you know, the name of the state is Ireland. Everybody should have a copy of that. And you see the Sovereign Sea and you see air on it. And that the people should look at Devon Air's signature on, on the Sovereign Sea. It's a fabulous history. The, the half is the covenant between God and man with all the information and knowledge for his penetrator in our civilization. And that's the Book of Psalms is the Psalter, and that's the Psaltery. And, and that is two images. You put that up to the mirror and you see the half of the Psaltery. And, and that's what makes everything legal, valid, and bona fide. It's on your passport, your title, your deeds, and everything. It's owned by the Irish Republic of Brotherhood, who keep it in trust for the Irish people. Um, that is. Uh, the proclamation, which is the foundation document of the state. And that together on the 21st of January 1919 in the cabinet room of the 12th moon, that was ratified uh, under those under 32 county elections of those times. <coughs> and Dole Aaron sat later in the round room and they ratified uh, the 32 county elections of 1918, the proclamation and the Mayor. And that's what's important. It has the two images, if you look at that. <coughs> you know, all, I, I try to explain that. The sun ship, the moon ship, right? And if you look at that, you see the heart on the back. And, and you know, everything you want to know about our civilization is on that. And uh, very kindly, uh, the people who go to that ceremony every year have put it up on the website, and it's called billymaguire.com. MCGUIRE.com. <coughs> you can get in that, although my broadband has been taken away. But that's my grand uncle, Tom McGuire. He and Sam McGuire, in 1914, the Irish Republican Brotherhood were looking for volunteers to collect intelligence on the Crown Forces and on the RIC. And he volunteered. He went to Clongeswood College. He could speak five languages and he sacrificed his whole life for the independence like those volunteers who gave their lives for us. And he went to, he joined the Essex Regiment in India, in Calcutta, in 1914, and he collected all the intelligence on the Crown Forces. And Sam McGuire, who was Church of Ireland, and was educated for the British Civil Service, he got himself into the post office, and he got himself to the desk <coughs> where all the intelligence for the Crown Forces and for, uh, the RIC came through his desk. And he came every Saturday with all that intelligence to Vaughan's Hotel here, 29 Parnell Square. And that's, you know, these battles, Kilmichael and Ross <coughs> Barry and John Keane, you know, they were all coordinated by them, uh, Tom Barry and all those people. You know, that's how we won our independence. And then on the 21st of January, Ireland became the Sovereign Republic of Ireland. That's where we are, as defined in the 1916 <coughs> proclamation. 
and the 32 countries which is your sovereignty, you are part of the citizens. And then in 1922, that was a disaster. If you read De Valera's constitution, you'll see what happened under the, the Anglo-Irish Treaty. The Crown of England would not, uh, he, he wanted to make Ireland a unity for the Crown of England and the, and the British. And what he did was he, he gave in the Shelburne Hotel, they changed Bonnerock and Hearn, to, they gave them back themselves a constitution claim, which actually Michael Collins did it in, in, in it. He acted as agents for the Crown of England. De Valera uh, resigned from Dorlaire. Uh, Griffith was elected unanimously by the 32 county election of 1918, and that was unanimous uh, as, as head of the Dorlaire government. And then the Oireachtas voted 64 to 57 for the Oireachtas. The Oireachtas is imposed by King George V of England. And the Oireachtas is supposed to borrow the money. Dáil Éireann has never sat in Leinster House. Dáil Éireann has never borrowed any money from the European Union. Dáil Éireann has never ratified the EEC Accession Treaty or the EU Accession Treaty. It's the Oireachtas that has borrowed the money, and that's under the Crown of England. It is the British taxpayer and the Crown of England and the British government is responsible for the sovereign debt. Irish people had no hand act or part in it, nor do we have any, uh, we do not accept that debt. And uh, how can you have a debt when, when Dolan has never ratified the EEC or accession treaty? And interesting, on the 1st of January, when they came here, I wrote a letter to Susan Denham, and I said in that letter, uh, and, and to, the, to the EU, that if they come here, Without Dáil uh, ratifying the EEC accession, and the, that's an act of war. They can come here, and that's what the Gaul was on about. We only have a provisional government since 1922, when that was imposed by King George V. That's the Oireachtas. And uh, you, you know, it's important that we know these things, and we're, it's important to tell the European Union, look, we never borrowed any of your money. That was imposed. Your, your laws are being imposed. Donald, why should we be imposed? We have that for 800 years. We're a sovereign people. We're so, we have a sovereign nation. We're lacking a sovereign government since 1922. Only a sovereign government has the right to issue licenses, collect taxes, make appointments, and appoint a judiciary under the sovereign seal of Dollar. It hasn't sat since 1922. It sits on the 21st of January uh, in the cabinet room of the mansion of RTE refused ever to, to mention it. The papers refused to mention it. Uh, uh, you, you, you. That's not correct, and, and I think it's time we stood up. Where would you go without your passport? That's what's on your passport that makes it legally valid in the a few days. And we have a wonderful history, and we're not allowed to know anything about it. And I think it's time. We have the most valuable territory in Europe. I claim every year as President of the Irish Republican Brotherhood for the Irish people, all seas, uh, uh, all our mineral rights, all the assets of the state, right around the whole 32 counties. That's what I vote, and that was the vote of 1918. That was the vote again in 1922 when Dolly voted unanimously and they, for Griffith. And Griffith was head of the Irish Republican Brotherhood and head of state. Uh, Michael D. Higgins is not uh, president of Ireland. He's president of the Oireachtas and subject and servant to the Crown of England, his queen. Enda Kenny is not uh, teacher of God Aaron. He is teacher of a provisional government imposed by King George V and, and is subject to serve the Crown of England in Sweden. Susan Denham is, uh, is the Chief Justice of, and if you look uh, and read Mary McAleese's speech when the Queen was here last year, you will see that uh, uh, English common law, that's what the courts are under. You have no allegiance to English common law. Where are they getting their sovereignty from? I see the defence forces have gone off uh, to some foreign country. Alan Chatter should be asked, where did he get his sovereign authority to send those to a foreign country? Does that mean that that country can attack us whenever they feel like? Because if we're in, is it under the Crown of England we're in under there? Or under Dáil Éireann? It can't be Dáil Éireann because we haven't. We haven't sat since 1922. And when the Queen came here last year, she had to get permission of the Irish Republican Brotherhood to lay that weed across the road there in, in the Garden of Remembrance. And the reason that Garden of Remembrance is here is because of Vaughan's Hotel. Uh, and it looks out onto the Garden of Remembrance. And that's what we're remembering. I have never seen any member of the Oireachtas at that ceremony before. They never attend the 21st of January. 
And part of they got, that's what this all was about. You have, when 27 countries sit around the table, you have to have a sovereign government. We only have a provision one. Read Sarah Satter and yourselves. And Bulmer Hobson, who I knew very well, he tells you that it was imposed by King George V as a provisional government. That's what it is. And that's what the goal He wouldn't allow us to join the EEC at the time, the European Common Market, because we didn't have a sovereign government. We still don't have a sovereign government today. And we still have never borrowed any of that money from Europe. And it's time that we stood up and said, those make those people who you are voting for accountable to you. And ask them, go and tell the European Union, go and tell Merkel, uh, the German, uh, she will, you, you expect her to bail out the British taxpayer on the sovereign debt. That's what she's doing. And that's what we're asking her to do. I think it is a scandal. And it's time that those TDs were held accountable to the Irish people. You have the Open in the Herring Court in McKee Barracks, which any of them can be indicted for treason. And that's under the 1916 proclamation. That's what you that's it's under. That is, and you read the last of it, it you heard it be read out today. And that's the foundation document of this state. And and that's you see that when they leave out on your tax form, they leave out air <coughs> on it. That's blasphemy, and that's covered in 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 Bun Rotten Hair. And why aren't that judges? When you went over the court, you see the sovereign seal that was changed from 12, 13 streams. Uh, at the symbol of Brahman law. Now why can't the judge tell you, am I in here under the Bun Rotten Hair? What Bun Rotten Hair are you using? Why would he he can say it was 75 years old this year? It's actually 93 years old. So there is no, they're not using the Bun Rotten Hair. They're using English common law, but they won't tell you that. You have no allegiance to English common law. And it's time, it's time these people were made comfortable. Civil servants, they are not in, an independent civil servant, is what Mary McAvee said in, in her speech when the Queen was in Dublin Castle. Independent civil servants, they're employed by the Oireachtas, they're paid for by the Oireachtas, they're not paid for by Don Aaron, they're not paid for. And, and if, you, if you look at, uh, you, you know, when you see that, and you see what's going on, and you see the, the, the state says it's as low as them, because we're not told the truth. RT do not tell the truth. They, they tell, oh, the minister said this. When I address a minister or a judge, provisional, provisional, that's what they are, provisional ministers, and provisional judges, uh, that's where they come from. You would see it over there on Michael Collins. He was a member of the provisional government. He, wasn't, he was a member originally of the sovereign government. Dáil Éireann is the sovereign government, and you hear this thing about the Dáil. The Dáil is just a meeting. The Dáil, the Oireachtas sat in Leinster House. The Oireachtas, how can one of those TDs that they call themselves, they're not TDs, they are members of the Oireachtas. You can't be a member of the Oireachtas and a member of Dáil Éireann. It's just, you have, to be a member of Dáil Éireann, you have to have a 32 county mandate. To change that in, in, for the children's referendum, it has to be a 32 county referendum. And, and you see on the, on the note that came in my door in the post, it said it can only be changed in a referendum, but it didn't tell you it has to be a 32 county referendum. And you should ask these questions. We have to start standing. If you don't, they're going to keep on putting on that sovereign debt down on your children and your grandchildren who had no responsibility for it. And that's what I say. I don't want to delay you. Uh, I thank you very much. And I must say, I thank both in the air for the wonderful achievement here today. It's such a happy meeting and there should be more of it. And coming them on are, are coming together again. And I asked, you, you know, for the peace and reconciliation that they would that they would restore all to terror uh, when the state was founded. If you, every other country in Europe has a sovereign government and we only have a provisional government. And, and uh, ask them, where, when and where was the state founded? They can't tell you. Isn't that a scandal in this day and age, with all the communication we have? It's lies and deception, and I think we have to stop that. Thank you very much. <laughs>